Hello, hello. How's everyone? Another episode here at uh, uh, Three Charts at 3 p.m. live, uh, Data Meaning. Uh, thanks for being here. We have Michael, we have Aaron. Uh, today's topic or ep this episode is about healthcare. Thanks for being here. Um, we wanted to show you really, really quick uh, here in um, before we start. Uh, this is our signing up sheet uh, for the show. You've never been here before. So these are mystery charts. Uh, they're a mystery to everyone. So each one of us have a mystery chart here that we're going to show. It can be a visualization. It can be, you know, just a, just one chart or an infographic. They come from anywhere. And the idea for us is to discuss this visualization and find a ways to make them better and to understand the first impression. What do, what can you see the first time that you've seen these visualizations? And everyone that is on the chat will be participating with us and they can provide their feedback too. And here I wanted to show you really quick, we have very good topics and amazing um, opportunities for next couple of weeks. We have food, equality, sports, the pizza, it's already full. Uh, we have pets, beer, almost full, education, and data plus women and so on. And Aaron is gonna put there in the chat, um, you know, it already did, thank you. Uh, they sign up, so if you wanna be a guest with us, you don't have to be an expert on data visualization, you can be with us and let us know if you're interested and if you have any questions, um, let us know. And we're gonna start with Michael. Michael has a great visualization for today. Uh, so Michael, let me, let me turn off my screen and you can share your screen. Thank you for being here. All right. Thanks, email. Thanks, Aaron. All right. How's it look? Let me see. Let me help you out. Oh, my goodness. Wow. wow. Oh, wow, wow. <laughs> a lot going on yeah. there. A lot of going on. Absolutely. So mm -hmm. this is actually part of uh, a submission from the 2020 Iron Viz uh, finalists, if you will. Uh, and Aaron or Yamil, you can share that overall link uh, yeah, into the yeah, chat. Yeah. Great. Um, okay, so great. the thing that really caught my eye was one, there's a lot here. Uh, one for me, you know, visually stunning, a lot of great information. And what we're kind of covering today is a chart that talks about the global okay. mental health crisis. Okay, great. Uh, and again, I, I think some of the dashboards we're going to look at today, you know, kind of cover mm -hmm. that that spectrum. Uh, you know, but if we're we're looking at this, the first thing that you know draws my eye, you know, is the mm -hmm. title um, of a dashboard. Mm -hmm. We're we're talking about the invisible enemy, um, and mm -hmm. you know, everybody okay. knows that as of the last uh, you know several years, if not more, there's been a, a heavy focus on mental health and uh, awareness. And this dashboard kind of brings to light the big picture. Um, one of the challenges that I, I found in reviewing this is that there's so much here that, you know, you just can't look at something and get the information that you want or need uh, just by kind of looking at it. There's a lot. And there's a lot that goes into each component uh, or section of this visual. Again, I, I think it's very well done. I think a lot of the types of charts and the colors, they work well. Uh, but if, if there's any kind of negative, you know, to this, it's very cluttered. Um, you you got to kind of have to figure out what's what, read into it. And this is not it. So you continue to scroll. There's there's even more uh, content. Okay. Uh, but this is a global... Uh, kind of data set. Uh, you're looking at all countries, kind of breakdown from gender and age and income. Uh, and again, it, this affects everyone. And that's really kind of the point of this visualization, which I think it does a really good job. Um, but I'll, I'll kind of, you know, get your, your take and we can have a dialogue on this and, you know, people from the audience you know, your take as well. Uh, you know, it's not just about me and, and my views, but um, so Emil, you know, you had a chance to kind of look at this briefly. What are your initial thoughts? I like the colors. Um, I'm not against them. I mean, not that we have some green, but it just works. 
with the black uh, background. Um, and they have, we have the orange. I kind of like them. Um, I think there are great individual visualizations here, right? Like you can see the ones on the middle, uh, how they're used. I, I like the stool tips. Um, there's a lot of annotations everywhere. Um, I, I see a lot of good potential. I, like what I, what I, everybody said, you know, I think it's just that it's my first impression is where do I start? There's too much, but I do like that. There are a lot of good elements here. For example, that you can see that in, in each one of these graphs, right? There is some type of annotation. What is the title? And there is some type of annotation probably about how to read them. Um, I like the position of some of them. It grabbed my attention, right? It grabs your attention. That thing in the middle, that Sankey, kind of Sankey. I really like how they did the Sankey and then the bars, the green bars that are there. Um, I like the heat map, like histogram, actually, histogram that we have here in the middle. I, love, I like histograms, so maybe I'm biased, but um, I like histograms. So I liked all of that stuff. I think that maybe it's just that it's too much together. But other than that, I mean, first impression is it's pretty, it's pretty interesting. I mean, it's super interesting. One of the things that I like the most, and we're you know, concentrating on this question on what do I like, you say where it says in the invisible, you can see that that's ch faded and then start like invisible enemy. That's that was interesting how they did that. Yeah. What do you think, Aaron? So my 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 theme going into the day is is uh, telling a story, and and mm -hmm. I think w what they're doing here is they tell a very deep story, and, and it's almost like an interactive uh, infographic where you really need to follow the story that they're trying to tell. So, some of it I don't quite understand, but. I've only been looking at it for three minutes. Um, I, I also, Mila, I, I like that the, the histogram look and the heat map and and how they're mm -hmm. kind of combining both two charts into one with with that that sand key look. The best uh, the sand key, yeah, yeah I, I also liked uh, towards the middle bottom. They have like basically it's a slope chart, but it's got like circles with with like mm -hmm. a little like around there. I, I like that they're 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 comparing uh, mental health law with mental health policy. Uh, from 2014 to 2017 to see how those have changed as opposed to giving you more graphs and lines on this page than, than you need. Uh, but uh, the thing I, I really like is I'm, I'm looking around. And again, if you're playing with this dashboard, it's much easier to see these things. The, they've got those green bubbles at the top, right? It's a little hard to follow that. But what I wanted to point out is uh, toward the far right hand side, there's uh, a little hover. It says show vertical. And when you click on that, you can then scroll through the years with just mental disorders highlighted. Again, the story is the mental health crisis, and they specifically didn't call out anything else in color here other than what the topic is. So when, when your story is about one thing and that's the, what mm -hmm. you want to get across, I, I think they did a good job of, of doing that with the use of, of just three colors here, it looks like. Uh, and here in this this uh, button drop down visualization, um, they did that again with highlighting only that mental disorder bar. Yeah. What, what and I think that that's one of the things that I, I found throughout this dashboard. You know that there's some mm -hmm. hidden gems, if you will. It, it it's not necessarily apparent. So unless you knew to kind of look here or click on it, you know we're we're inquisitive, so we're we're going to hover and do this. But there's no net real call out. You know, hey, you know, identify the, this, click on it, you know, for a different view. Mm -hmm. Furthermore, over here on, on the left hand side, you've got the tool tip, yes. which, you know, my own personal view on this is if there's a lot of text, uh, especially with the just the default coloring and background, I, I can't read this. This the way it's formatted. It, it's just too much for me. I can't digest this. Mm -hmm. um, and I'll, and I'll kind of go into the tool tips in, in just a moment. Mm -hmm. Over here, this was kind of interesting. I thought, okay, well, this is a, a filter icon. Maybe okay. this is filtering some things. So again, it wasn't really apparent. There's no, you know, textual call out or indication. I'm just inquisitive. I'm going to hover and click. Um, and now I can actually do some more things. I can break this up by the income groups. I can mm -hmm. actually drill this down into the different regions. And you find that all throughout the dashboard which again, not a lot of continuity. Okay, 
I can interact and I can drill down into the maybe the story I want. But um, I think maybe to Aaron's point, right, this is a guided story. One of the things that I might do to improve this is to make it flow a little bit better. It's it's very wide. There's a lot of stuff crammed into it. And maybe what I would do is kind of tell a, a story where I have to kind of read through, click, and then the thing would maybe scroll down or appear some more data, more of a, you know, in, instead of exploratory, you know, it's actually explaining some things as we go and then interact, you know, as you get to that section. Here, what I do like is on this left-hand side, the big number, 801 million individuals impacted, you know, globally. That's a lot of people. Yeah. So now you can get the, uh, you know, the big picture. And then how does it dissect, you know, from the different mm. uh, genders, age group, uh, income classes, but it's a lot. You know, there's, <laughs> you can spend all day in, yeah. in one chart. But I'm going to go back to the mm -hmm. tooltips. They did a fantastic job, I think, of kind of presenting this in, in mm -hmm. a great way. But the tooltips are, for me, less than desirable, right? It's just the generic tooltip, a little bit of formatting, not much. But I think there could have been, you know, some use of, you know, different colors or, you know, background image or, or something. So it's not just, you know, black, uh, black on white. Yeah. And that, that's kind of the downside solid mm -hmm. dashboard overall maybe a little too much information but the information is it's solid correct i think this dashboard and then there's a question here i mean and sorry someone from the audience and i'm actually let me go back to the audience first to this chat and i go back to what i was thinking so someone from here from linkedin says i wish they will have made the year ranges the same from chart to chart between the top right chart and the mental policy let me, let me put it here on the screen sorry the mental policy uh, versus the mental health law chart i am interested interested as to why they didn't hmm. so one of the thoughts is this dashboard and you got the data hmm. here but hmm. we run into this all the time data comes hmm. from maybe different data sets from different periods of time different aggregations so as much as we'd like everything to be uniform, um, more often than not, it's not usually the case. Sometimes there's no data for this particular year in a category. Um, and if we try to normalize just to make it fit, it kind of skews uh, you know, the interpretation. So I, I get it, but at the same time, we just have to be mindful that sometimes the data is not there. Yeah. They have, uh, we have Sydney. Thank you, Sydney, for being here. He said, I guess global mental health got worse after COVID. Fear, restriction policies, global job crisis, all contributed to worse health globally, in my opinion. And we have um, Eric. I'm going to say congrats. Um, so I'm going to go back to what I was thinking. So every time, more and more on a look at it, I was like, this is great. I mean, there is a lot of good stuff here. It's just there is too much together. So imagine where it says health, uh, it says prevalence of mental health crisis disorder, I'm sorry, across the world. And the one on the right, the, the uh, histogram, those two only, only, that's it. No other more charts, nothing else, just one visualization, right? That only shows me those two. And maybe you have other tabs where you're showing the other ones that we see here. But only that specific one in the middle here left, I think that will be some successful. Just chose this, don't show anything else, and then keep it with those uh, filters that you have there. And everything else that we see on the right on the bottom, I would just put it in another another tab on another, like maybe doing a story, maybe it will be better. It's just too much in just one place. But I think the other ones are great visualization. They're just maybe too much to be all together here another option could be to make the, the, the dashboard very long right so then you put them underneath and not together all this together because it's just way too much i don't know i, I, I look at it i feel like downloading this changing it that way and see how it looks i don't know and don't, don't change anything just move it around 
And yeah, Michael had said something earlier yeah. about, you know, yeah. it, it, expanding it out so that it's like yeah. you have to basically click on something to see the next set of, of visuals. And mm. I think we, in a previous show, we, we had, we came up upon one that was like that. It was like, mm. the, your, to your point, it was just these two graphs. Mm -hmm. And then you click on like, you know, next part of the story or whatever that button was, mm -hmm. and it dropped it down and then you could see more that they wanted to show. And then you can hit another button to see more. So you just kept going down further and further so that you could concentrate on a certain section of that, that story, as opposed to mm -hmm. immediately being overwhelmed with everything on a, on a single view. Exactly. Because you don't know where to start here. And then you get confused trying to see in the right, okay, what should I look at first or second? Mm -hmm. well, yeah. And that, that's the thing, right? I, I think you kind of hit it on the head there. You, you know, normally we're going to start at the kind of the top left, mm -hmm. you know, but what's throwing me is then you got the two charts right next to the title. So mm -hmm. I'm wondering, hey, is this the most important piece of information? But you got mm -hmm. the bands, you know, showing again the big impact, right? This is mm -hmm. a global, uh, you know, issue. And again, they do a good job, right? I can follow it through, but it's it's just the layout, I think. The layout, yeah. You know, for me, if, if we can restructure it and have it more kind of like in a story format where it's guiding people to interactivity. You know, the other thing, I don't know if you notice that as you start filtering mm -hmm. down, the filter mm -hmm. doesn't necessarily apply to all mm -hmm. charts. So yeah. when you start selecting things, it, it is important, you know, to kind of, show the user hey this is only impacting maybe this region or this is part of you know the entire world it, you know don't necessarily assume because i i pick north america that every chart is now filtered down to north america it's not mm -hmm. um so you need somewhere that you know explains that whether it's in the title or uh, maybe in the subtext i think that would be helpful uh, one other thing I noticed was there's a couple of these sheets on this dashboard that have mm. a, a single filter that filters just that sheet. Mm. Um, in the prevalence of mental disorders by gender and country with the line going up like this, there's a, a, a drop down for a filter there that only changes that sheet. And then the bottom right one, the, the proportion of mental health professionals per 100K, that also has a drop down filter that only changes that sheet. That I, I don't I don't have any problem with that, but if you look at the the placement of those filters within the sheet, the one on the bottom right is in the kind of the upper right hand corner. The other one is in the lower left hand corner, and and they don't really stand out as if unless you you know these these dashboards well, you don't really know that that's a filter to even use. So they have some mm -hmm. kind of cohesion of where where you can interact with, and then and then having that same filter in the same similar location would be helpful as you try to get through it all. Exactly. Yeah. And kind of what you pointed out earlier, you know, this go hide me type filter, you, you have to have some continuity, you know, across all your dashboards or, you know, throughout the whole thing. Otherwise, you know, people are clicking or you can totally miss it. You know, you don't even know that, oh, this was a filter I could select. Um, but I, I think, again, if we're able to format it more of mm -hmm. that story, you could have Great the filters system. and the subtext, you know, uniformed and identified. And as you select something, it affects that. You don't have to worry about necessarily the rest of the dashboard. And, oh, hey, when I changed this, did it affect this chart at all? No, mm -hmm, it's only mm -hmm. affecting this one. And I think that's where, again, you know, as a just a normal user, I might get a little confused if this was Correct. laid out in the story format. You know, it is what it is. It's focused yes. on that individual um, yeah. section. If, if they're just for that area, then maybe separating them and not getting them all together, right? Maybe like a story form and maybe yeah. um, the next one, um, it would be better, you know, to, to have it separated. Um, yeah, so we're going yeah, for, right For now. me, though, again, you know, when I always look at these dashboards, this mm -hmm. lives up to the title. Mm -hmm. You know, pretty much every scenario that you want to kind of look and dissect this, you know, uh, crisis by, you know, it's there. The information is there for you to consume from, you know, gender, age groups, you know, income, uh, you know, it's all kind of right here, which is great. So that, I think, again, solid effort, um, just maybe focus more on kind of the layout presentation and the tool tips. And for me, it, it'd be a huge win. Oh, yeah.
Oh, thank you. That's a great, great one. Anybody else in the chat before we go to Aaron's a dashboard? Anybody else want to have any opinion on how you can change it, make it better? Uh, any advantage or adjustments that you guys can think of? But I yep. think that everybody, you know, have a, uh, the same opinion of like, this is just layout and just moving stuff around will make it so much better for sure. But it's, it's a great visualization. It just needs that. So Aaron, uh, show, show us what you got. Okay. Usually I, I ramble on towards the end of the show with a bunch of things. So I want to get in the middle so we can, uh, yeah, more. bookend it with, uh, more You're focused good. content. So let me get that shared. Let me go back to. All right, good. Yep, I can see. Yeah, oh, you're good to go. All right. Uh, the reason we picked this week's topic was because today is National Pharmacist Day, so mm -hmm. I tried to find some kind of visual that would uh, would speak to that. There, there wasn't a, a whole lot out there. Uh, although you could go into anything pharmaceutical, and there, I'm sure mm -hmm. there would be plenty there. So I found this map of New York City. Uh, it's the pharmacies in New York City, and they have each of the neighborhoods. Mm -hmm. And, um, so, you know, if you, you clicked on a, a, a neighborhood, you can see all the pharmacies and, and where they're at there and the address, uh, the, the graph here itself is not robust. There's not, there's not a lot going on. Uh, but I, what I wanted to, to point out was, is the ability to, to use a map in Tableau to see, uh, things within a neighborhood. Uh, here we, we could have gotten more information. There's, Again, this is just a sheet. It's not an actual dashboard, but I, I, I just uh, I, I like the use of uh, the geospatial that that Tableau has, and this is a, just a, a good basic example of that. Okay. The next one is uh, so this is putting big pharma spending into perspective. So if this is the this is the uh, the graph here. Hmm. So okay. what they what they did was um, the sales and marketing is the big orange bubble and the research and development is the smaller green one. Okay. So it's hard for the, the human brain to grasp at the, the size of, of a, a circle versus a bar. So there, there's obviously a couple different ways you can do this, but uh, I just want to get you guys' thought on, on this before I continue. So what do you think, Michael? I think that the nine and seven point three, or the they're like close right there, right? So it's not bad, bad. Well, I think when you're doing comparison, I think even in this manner, it's hard to you know gauge the size. One, you had to put the number on there, and and you're doing that mm -hmm. from one to the other. You know, I'm more focused on kind of the intersection. Like, was this supposed to be kind of like a Venn diagram or more of just the mm. comparison between the two. If they're a comparison, just show me a bar chart side by side. And, you know, that's easier for visually for us to evaluate. Okay, this is significantly bigger than the other. Otherwise, uh, I'm, I'm, you know, 9, 9.3, you know, 5, 7, 5, 5. It's, you know, what it's, does that it's mean? Impossible. Very, that's the same. And yeah. the other problem is the orange. So this is sorted from left, top to right, from top to bottom, and the orange, but not on the blue. Because if you see, you think about where it says Roche, it's 9.3, the blue. So you see it came back another, like you have to compare that 9.3 with the 9.9 .9 on top and the 8.2. You see, it's like too hard to compare now. Yeah. yeah. And they read, they, they did it. A different version of that. Oh, cool. Okay, this is better. Okay, so we great. Got the same, we got the same marketing in orange and the development in, in the blue. So better. it's still there's still a lot going on here, but it's a vast improvement to the way it was before. Yes, absolutely, absolutely. You know, they've got it. I don't even know how they're sorting it now because these oranges aren't mm -hmm. sorted in the right way. I think it's by uh, no, it's not by a alphabetical order either no idea uh, point being though you, you can now identify from each organization what mm -hmm. you know their overall marketing versus r d spend is and you know to me in a comparison you see johnson johnson you know by far you know exceeds okay. on the marketing spend you know on, on the other ones it seems like a big number but 
that uh, on the bubble, you know, the circles overlapping each other, it doesn't seem as significant as with the bar. The bar, you know, almost makes it feel like, hey, you know, in fact, it, it is almost double, but it doesn't look like it's double. It's true. Yeah. That's true. That's hard to see. Yeah, that's right. In the in the bubble. But I, I think, Michael, you were right in something. The bubble is confusing because you think that that intersection in between the two is something else, right? When there's really nothing. Like, like what, why are they putting them all? It looks together? like a join. Like a join, yeah. Or something. Like, what is that? There's nothing in there. There's really nothing. Yeah. There's nothing. There's <laughs> You know what I mean? That's it's really more it's getting people confused. This is a very good example, Aaron, of why you want to use bar chart, right? It's a perfect example of don't yeah, do bar, that. Yeah, don't do I, it. I, I know some people are hesitant to use bar charts because they're they're boring and like you use them everywhere. But if you want to, to make a point and mm. the bar chart is the, the easiest way for somebody to immediately understand it, then you just got to use it because it, it's going to have more insight and, and more impact than, than trying to come up with something like this to be just to do something different, you know? Yeah. And to that point, I mean, mm -hmm. there is, you know, at least a few dozen ways to style a bar chart. Mm -hmm. So it doesn't look just, yeah. you know, boring. So if you're going to do that, you know, explore those opportunities, you know, don't go with a chart, just say, well, I keep using a bar chart. Let me try something else. We want to make sure it's clear, easy to understand, and intuitive. This, yep. I've got no issues seeing the comparison between one value and another. Yep. It's easy. Yep. So All we right. have Sydney. In before you go, Sydney says, yep. "Nice chart about pharma spend. Simply and easy to identify which companies invest um, invest more in research and development." And the last there's one more here says all different logo fonts catch your eye unless you don't recognize the logo but it's much more readable than circles absolutely thank you mm -hmm. yes okay let me go on to the next one yeah, next one and, and this is this is something that i i, I tweeted at the uh, today show to to viz better because mm -hmm. they shared they shared this this map oh wow does, it, okay. does anyone know what these colors represent I don't, but I think it's just <laughs> the Something red. Bad. My guess is the red is just <laughs> worst. Right. right. But but what's that percentage? Like it's a percentage change, but there's no legend. Oh my so, god. This is the today show. The today yeah, show. Right. So th th this is why I'm, I, I wanted to point out was uh, not only the, the chart here, but especially when we're we're talking about uh, the COVID situation. This there, good. this is good. There, there's such misinformation. But a lot of that is based off of what is being displayed and how it's being displayed. It can be completely inaccurate because of the way that, that it's displayed. It Maybe the same data, but people don't understand it because they, they're not representing that data in, in the, the most easily digestible way. So this is one of those examples of their, their this was, let's see, when was this? This was back in April. Like, yeah. I don't really know what the situation was back then, but I don't have any context of what this is, but but you immediately throw those big <laughs> colors out there and all of a sudden yeah. the world's on fire. There, there is some, okay, this is funny. Thank you, whoever it's, uh, we- Love the small reason, colors, LinkedIn, right? <laughs> it's LinkedIn user. Uh, so, sorry that it says LinkedIn user, but it, that's what it says here in our uh, tool, but it uh, says love the fall colors. <laughs> that's funny. Um, I mean, is. it's, I mean, I don't know. I'm going to move into Texas, I think. That's, so, that's uh, uh, Tito. Tito said that. Tito. Okay. Tito. Thank you, Tito. All right. It's so so that, that's, that's all I wanted to point out was like, uh, again, it all, it's all about what story you're trying to tell. And if you have something as, as important as this topic and as important as healthcare, you mm -hmm. have to be as accurate oh, yeah. as you can, especially if you're a something public like the Today Show, where millions of people are going to be looking at things. You, you you can't take that chance that people are going to mis, uh, misrepresent or misunderstand what you're showing them. So you're, that's absolutely right. I mean, we're talking about I, I heard this show, this Today Show is probably 20, 25 million viewers a day. We're talking about yeah. a lot of people. Yeah, I, I tend so. uh, I, I tend to, to tweet at the Today Show and um, CNBC often for the for their terrible uh, graph choices. <laughs> So far, I haven't gotten any any reaction from them. But it makes me feel good. So we have to go Josh Tapley to talk to Comcast 
and fix this, Josh Stapley, please. <laughs> All right, uh, going on to the next one. We're looking at COVID-19 school data. Oh, okay. Uh, COVID school data hub. So what you're looking at here is um, in the blue are each of the counties that are in person at, at whatever date interval you have selected. Okay, cool. Um, and then you have the hybrid and the virtual, and then it, they, they don't have a lot of data for a lot of states, even as, a, as the years go on. But I like that you can scroll through this and you can see how things have changed. Florida has been all blue th this entire time, but states like California are a little different. They, they, If you see here in the beginning, everything is red for virtual and then going to May of 2021, you can see there's a lot of red missing um, and some blue, a, a lot more blue there. So I, I just wanted to point out the, you know, how, how this functioned and um, and what you might be able to gain from it. Some KPIs would be nice. What do you guys think? What do you think, Michael? I think it's just hard to read a little bit, right? But I, I think what, what he's doing there, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. kind of like a time series, like when you look over time, you can kind of see the change in various mm -hmm. states. Okay, I see. You know, if I'm curious about, you know, the KPIs or the numbers, I might want to, you know, isolate the state there but this visualization the way it is i think it works work, based right. on looking at the trends over time like you said california you know changes significantly mm. and some of the other states florida not so much um well, and if so i have additional did, questions i'd dive into them at that point what you did here to change it to this is it down all there I, all i did was click on a state oh, okay i gotcha so you can click on the state that's good See what's going on in Michael's neck of the woods. Sorry, son. Let's yeah, see. It, it changes hourly. So you, <laughs> I don't think they're capturing all that data. So if you hover to the map now, what does it do? Oh, cool. Okay. It gives you where. Okay. Perfect. But to the point, I, you know, there's no numbers. It's just showing you kind of the, the school district yeah. there. Concentration, um, right? So you don't mm -hmm. know, you know, in some of these counties, they're super small, you know, small number of students, small population. So when you have, you know, the virtual hybrid in person, you can't really compare, you know, to a large district like a Phoenix uh, kind of metro or something. Um, it's kind of just, it is what it is, you know. Mm -hmm. I see. Okay. Not bad. Not bad. All right, next one. I uh, can't remember which ones I took. Okay, so we're now we're looking at uh, the mm -hmm. economy. So then we're looking net change in U.S. jobs, and this is only through January 2021. Uh, mm -hmm. But what what I what I want to point out was I, I like the drastic change in color. You know, we're we're everything's fine in back here in January of 2002. Mm -hmm. Okay, this was the recession in the 08 09 time period, and okay. then in, immediately you could see in January of 2020. Uh, uh, just uh, just a huge drop. Can you make it uh, large? Make it large. Larger, yeah. yeah, I can make it larger. Yeah. Perfect. That's fine. So what, what I like about this visual is that it the, the change in color makes you easily mm -hmm. draw your eyes to what they what they're probably pointing out. What's going on in here? Not not a big deal. What's going on here? Not a big deal. It's a huge change here. Big spike here. Huge change here. Um, you know, I, so that, that's why I, I kind of picked this one. March to, okay. I mean, it's easy to understand. Yep. Uh, not sure if this synchronized access, but um, not sure. Um, I don't know. So it looks like this is just the count, maybe the, the monthly job growth in thousands. And this is mm -hmm. the, mm. the April. F what is that? Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Don't don't really know. Says so somebody from the chat says the monthly access is busy, very busy. Hard to read too because it's uh, uh the, the months are, you know, vertical. Is are not like yeah. hard to read. Right, and you don't need every single one of them. No, no, no. Actually, they, it looks like they didn't. It's just January and July of each year. And this is just the change. 
So the variance, right? This is the variance of U.S. jobs. Okay. So that so that's that's the question is is it the change or is it the variance? Because we're down here at negative twenty thousand. That's mm, not a percentage. Not variance, no. So it's kind of like it's not the a percentage variance. It's just the variance between the two. Um, I don't know. What do you think, Michael? Confused? Yeah, I think they could have done a better job kind of explaining, you know, what the axes are, labeling things, uh, you know, spending already, what, two minutes trying to figure out what they are. Uh, again, I'm looking at the title. Does the chart, you know, th does it reference what the title is? The net change in U.S. jobs from 2002 to 2021. If I didn't have two axes, uh, axes, right? It, mm -hmm. it kind of makes sense, but I'm, I'm now I'm kind of looking at that. Okay, what is that axis compared to the other side? Um, it's a monthly change for 20 years. Okay. So uh, James. But we have to in infer that, right? If if it, it is what it is, you know, you should put that in the context. So I guess that makes sense, James. So James said it is monthly change for 20 years. Okay. Okay. All right. Next one, we're looking at the, the march of the coronavirus across America. And this is from The Economist. And I've not seen one like this before. So what is this? <laughs> so this is, uh, uh, we're, we're currently on recent cases. Uh -huh. And when you hover on, uh, uh, I don't even know if this is a county. They're probably a county. Yeah. It gives you some data about that county, but they've got these like peaks, which I don't understand why they would include that. Cause if you can't tell what's going on here, like wow. you, there's just, I don't, I didn't see any point in, in having those peaks there. Yeah, can you put that in the chat? The link, put the chat, the link in the chat. The big drop from the previous uh james thank you james says the red big drop is around march 2020 COVID. so once COVID started the lockdowns and all that stuff thank yeah. you james um so, so like i don't know what the point of their what's their story here they, they have a color legend which I don't, i'm not mad at that mm -hmm. but there's no doesn't say what those peaks are even for when I was looking at it, I was just thinking, this is the frozen map. It's frozen everywhere, frozen in every state. It's mountains. <laughs> the, move, the Disney frozen. Um, <laughs> yeah. Everywhere. I don't know. It's just. And trying. Well, if you think about it, you see, there's this uh, COVID. Uh, it says cases per 100,000 people, last 14 days. Um, but it's just. What are you trying to? Well, I'm trying to figure out what is that? Those little peaks. It's, it's like a bar chart for how much they have for each mm -hmm. county on mm -hmm. top of a map, overlay it on top of each other. This is again the same thing when you're trying to put too much stuff on something. So maybe you know, just by showing just a state by itself could be better, right? So like a state, so in the beginning, it should be like, so like your state, and then you just look at your state. I don't know, just trying yeah. to make it a little bit easier to understand. Uh, right I think now. initially the, the, you know, maybe the goal was to instill, so, not say fear, but awareness. Like if you look at awareness. all those spikes, everything kind of on the, you know, East Coast, mm -hmm. you know, it's like, what's going on? You know, but in order to actually explore this data, you can't, you can't isolate, you know, on, on one specific city or county, you know, very easily. I see. So I, I think you just look at the spikes and go, wow, that's a problem. So James have a good point. James says, I think the peaks are death per 100K. Wow. Mm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And the only said, one, Michael, Michael, to your point, I, the only one I can pick out is this one here. So it's like, it's not too big, right? It, it, at least it doesn't seem like it. 
but when you click on the deaths, you see it spikes up mm. dramatically. But if that's happening over here, you can't tell that. No. But if you look at like Miami and things with just with the cases, mm -hmm. it looks like a huge spike. The deaths, you know, yeah, nah, not, not so much. But right. this is the problem with this kind of, you know, chart. You can't, again, compare one city to another just because of the spike. Otherwise, in the, you know, central mm -hmm. north east i'm looking at it, it's like wow that's that's the worst place to live right now but it it's may incredible. not be so get you need to everybody needs to move to florida here we don't we don't have any laws <laughs> for covid mm -hmm. everybody goes okay. everywhere no mask they don't care i got two <laughs> more uh, this one is a little weird uh -huh. so here we're looking at the global daily new confirmed cases Mm -hmm. um, I think this is uh, to through September of 2020, so it's a, a little mm -hmm. bit aged, but I'm not seeing a, a graph like this. It looks like there's two there's two of them here. This is something put, completely put, different. Put it in the chat again, put, if you can, because that's how easy for them to look at it on their screen. Okay, so this is global daily new confirmed cases of COVID-19. So it's a reverse, it's like a reverse axis. So instead mm -hmm. of going up, they're going down. Okay. So like in the beginning of 2020, you can see that it was mainly China. And then here in February kind of got everywhere. And here in March is where kind of we, we peaked at. Um, but they, mm -hmm. they're doing the axis backwards. So it goes down, but I'm not sure why you do that. I'm I'm trying to figure out if there's any any good reason or if it's helping me to understand this to going like this reverse. Mm, I don't know. I'm not I'm not convinced. Uh, could, could they be could doing they... it like a like an iceberg, where here's the top count going down, and it, going you can only, under. icebergs you can only see a little bit of the top, but most of the icebergs that you don't see is under the water. I don't mm, know. Okay. So help me understand the the top portion. Is that a running total of global daily new confirmed cases, or is that just the average? I would guess it's so. Like in September, there were three hundred thousand. I'm curious, James. Uh, mm -hmm. What do you think, James Emery? What do you think? Put in the chat. I'm curious. You think it makes sense? So I, I don't know. Uh, it says total global cases. Okay. So I mean, it, I understand what you, I mean, I can understand it. It's just that I'm trying to see if it's better to have it in the other way or not, or it's the same thing. I just don't, don't understand why they have to be like this reverse. Mm -hmm. I don't, maybe there is a reason, but mm, Total global cases, re, mar, margin of error. Oh, okay, there is a margin of error here. Yeah, James agrees with you. He thinks it's the iceberg idea. Okay, he thinks that again. You are only seeing a few confirmed when there are many suspected. Okay. Hmm. So that could be it, right? They're trying to do it in a way that it's different, let's say. But I don't know. The colors are um, could work. Mm -hmm. They're not green, red, or they're just New, kind of neutral. Mm, yeah. And then you have this one in China or India, but what is the color? My other question is: Okay, could work, but at the same time, well, how do you? Why do you color this orange in uh, so dark? Yeah. In China or in India, I think it is right. Yeah. yeah, that doesn't make sense. The the color. I don't think the color has any impact on the type of data. Nothing, I think it's right? just to Nothing. create variety so you can see it easier. Yeah, yeah it's like like these are the same. And these are the same. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. All right, last one, and then we can get to yours, email. Mm -hmm. But I only have one. Here we're looking in, in many rich countries. Uh, COVID has slashed life expectancy to below twenty fifteen levels. Mm -hmm. So 
what confused me about this one was the legend. So the legend is in gray, but none of the colors are. Okay, so what they're saying is the lighter color is the earlier year and the darker color is. Okay. So I get that with the women. It took me a second to understand this one for men. Mm. But it mentions this 2015 level as well, but it doesn't, I don't see that anywhere because we're all we're looking at is between 2019 and 2020. I really think there's a better way to do this. And Steve Wexler and his site have multiple ways that you can do this better. I, I think having it this way could be a little bit confusing. He usually doesn't do it this way. He does it um, going down, right? Like not in a chart going from left to right. So, um, yeah. so if I'm looking at trying to understand this, if you're mm -hmm. looking at like 19, 2019, 2020, look for the US. For men, it was, you know, 77, but you can't really tell. And now it's below 75. So we've cut off two or three years. It's mm. like so for women, you're at about 82, and down, now you're down to about 80 in 2020. I'm going to send this to Steve. I'm, I'm curious what he will say. I mean, the idea of having the the countries on the bottom, but at the same time, you see you have Norway and then you have Switzerland under. It's a little bit. So the, each line is one of those countries, right? Yeah. So mm -hmm. that's the United States. Okay. That's the United States. This is the Czech Republic. This mm -hmm. is Chile. Chile. I, I see what you mean. I didn't even notice that before that they've got them layered like this. Yeah, so that's what each country is. It's, it's just a little confusing when you see the line in between. Yeah, because like this is France, and on both sides you got Germany and Austria. Exactly. Hmm. Um, so look, look, look at the scale too. I think you know the distance between the bars. When you look at the scale, you know it's like a year, maybe six months. Who knows? could be days on some of these things. So yes, it's, you know, less in some instances, but it's not going from, you know, life expectancies like 80 this uh, past year, and it's now 72. You know, to me, it's still within that acceptable range of, you know, it's going to fluctuate. Yeah, I know. Norway is the only one that didn't drop. You can kind of see that the lighter one is underneath the darker one. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, they went up, and like this one looks like it didn't change at all for Denmark. Yeah. So well, I, although the title says that it it slightly mm -hmm. increased again, it could be, you know, days. You, you don't know. So James says, I think the design was to fit a column. The more logical orientation will be countries on the Y. Yeah. Exactly. And I think that's what somebody like Steve will do, put it on, on the Y axis, right? Because that's what he usually does in his blogs and his uh, visualizations. So um, I don't know. It was, um, it's, it's a good one, actually. I really like that you found this one because it makes you think how to make it better. And this is something that are not, uh, this type of charts is something that we don't use a lot, but yeah. we should. Um, this it's gap chart, gam charts. Hmm? Yeah, it's kind of like a slope chart uh, slope in slope another chart. way. You know, what, where, where was it at one point and where is it now? Mm -hmm. um, it, we should use them more, right? Like, uh, I really like it. Um, anyway, Joe, I have something for you. So this one, Joe, don't worry about it because I think you like this one. So this one that I'm going to bring in, that's really, I'm going to give this to Joe. This is one, Joe, that actually um, I think it's not bad, but we can talk a lot about colors. And that's what I wanted to bring it in uh, about the colors. Um, let me see. Can you can you guys see my screen? I'm not sure if. Uh, hold, on. Uh, hold on a second. So it's about colors, I think. It's not a bad visualization, but I think it needs some help. I mean, I'm not going to tell too much. So let's go. Uh, 
whoever, my Michael, if you want to tell me, what do you think? What's your first impression? I'm Joe. Since you joined, put it in the chat. Whatever you think. Put it out there. Let me take this out. Hold on a second. It's a lot of red. Mm -hmm. For me, the, the fonts, you know, are difficult to read. I, it's got like that italic, uh, you know, face to it, which, you know, small it is it is it's all to read so i'm having a time kind of uh, interpreting some of these things uh, i think right off that's hard red overall uh mm -hmm. very powerful you know bold color um which you know I'm just not sure sure it's working for me i think data in itself i, I do like the information it's presenting, but again, mm -hmm. I, I think it's it's being di it's distracting, based again on the fonts oh. and kind of the color scheme. Uh, for me, okay. I I can't focus on this. Okay, perfect. So, what do you think, Aaron? What's your first impression? I, that's just like you know, I picked this to be honest on purpose because I when I saw it the first time, I thought. Oh man, this color! And I said, I want to talk about this color. Yeah, the color definitely needs some some help. Uh, the the dots in the middle are hard. The, the the colors don't change enough for me of the to follow it real well. Uh, again, a m couple of minor things like on the left hand side, the very first bar chart. You can't read the whole sentence there because mm -hmm. there's dot dot Good. dot there. And Good. I've I've never found a use case of using two decimal places for percentages. Mm -hmm. uh, not that it doesn't exist, but this doesn't seem like something that you'd need to be that exact on. Exactly. And I see and I see a lot of the the bar charts that go up, all the axes, even the the numbers on the upper right hand side, on that axis, they're turned sideways. Those when you can keep your your end users from having to do this. To read anything, the better. Correct. That's exactly what I wanted to bring this one to the everybody's attention because I think that um, it deserves, you know, some uh, um, explanation or like uh, it wasn't a one of those. <clears throat> it says Iron Biz twenty twenty competition, so uh, or at least submission. I think it is submission. I'm sorry, but I think there was a lot uh, to talk about. Uh, so let, let me see what they have in the chat on. So <clears throat> Joe have uh, right off the bat, red is pretty aggressive. And he said a uh, comic sans almost. Um, yeah. We have James saying not enough contrast, contrast in the main chart, excuse me. <clears throat> and then we have a probably think Tito, uh, well, the dot dot thing reminds me of Conic 4. <laughs> <laughs> Except you're losing. <laughs> That's right. You know, one of the things that I do think they did a good job is putting questions to the titles. And I think that's a powerful <laughs> way to get the uh -huh. user to understand, mm -hmm. you know, is my, is the question or is this chart answering what I need to know? You know, how mm -hmm. much importance is given to mental health by individuals? Then on the other side, how much importance does your company place mm -hmm. for mm -hmm. mental health? Um, and whether the orientation is good or not, you know, I, I think the data supports, you know, these questions. I just think, again, the layout, the design could be improved for readability <laughs> and clarity. But mm -hmm. they did it's a good also, job there. It's also, it's not interactable. Uh, like, I, you, no matter what you click on, it doesn't do anything. That would be helpful. And okay. um, also, when you hover on a dot, it, it says live in and work in. Mm -hmm which are identical on every dot, it seems like. So it's like repetitive and it may not need to be there. But I also see it's got a country there. So it would be helpful and to personalize it to be able to select as a filter your country so you can see how it compares to, to where you live. Yes. I, I think the other thing is there is no like a high level metrics that show us. Because when I was looking at the title, I was like, oh, this is great. Mental health in tech workplace because you know we all work in data uh, and tech so i said man i'm pretty sure that every, anybody will be interested in this 
and but I'm I cannot get the main the main point the main story here. It's kind of missing. I'm trying to you know there's this individual insights here or there, but where is the the main point that I'm trying to to push out there? I, I don't I don't get it. Um, but it's it looks like a great data to visualize. It looks like something with a lot of potential. It's just that. Uh, I don't know. I think there's a lot of wasted information here, like a lot of wasted uh, kind of like space too. Um, yeah, you, you, know, you mentioned that the data looks good. They do list the data source at the bottom, yes, but mm -hmm. they don't provide a link to it. So now oh. I have to search. Like if I want to really dig into this because I'm not getting mm -hmm. what they what they're trying to tell me, you're gonna have to go and find it yourself. So uh, you know, my recommendation if you're gonna have anything out available publicly is that you if you can link it back to the, where you got it from okay. otherwise this without me search for this this can be made up this, this we don't know if this is legit or not and a lot of what we visualize as part of our job is people having faith in the data that we're providing trust it's the data be right got to be trusted it's got to be governed people need to know that they can trust it and if they if you have to go and search for it or they don't give you where this data is coming from there's a little bit of, uh, you know, hesitancy to, to believe what they're looking at. Yeah. So we have James say is having a scale besides the dot will help zero to 100, but better to change chart type. And we have Joe, he said, uh, no response in the charts skew, skew the shape of the bar chart might, might be better to grade those out or put an asterisk. Okay. Yes, absolutely. And then we have um, somebody from because I can read the access label at top left. So this one's probably it's got okay. those dots. Yeah, the dots. And it's, then it's like the uniformity, right? If you look at the whole thing from top mm -hmm. to bottom, none of the charts and kind of width are uniform. Mm -hmm. Again, I think having the consistency, readability is important. The colors, the background, and the red for me. It, I can't focus it. It hurts to look at it. It's good data, but I, I just can't focus on it. Yeah. So he, Joe, have a good point. He said, "Is the main point reasons are not shared with your employer that text in the bottom middle?" So probably talking about this, I think, right? Uh, it's interesting. Could use more space. And yeah, maybe this, you know, could be or again, it's not pointing specifically what is the most important information what is the actual um what is they're actually trying to to tell what's the story here again uh there's also someone saying that 352 people survey is a small number how many companies size of companies that's true mm -hmm. absolutely there was um okay let me show you one more thing there was this uh on the same iron Biz, uh, competition there was this um let me see if i can make a little bit smaller sorry for that um this thing which i thought it was really interesting yikes and they provide this chart <laughs> that it's uh oh, sorry for that they provided this chart that uh seemed uh, actually interesting uh chart but again it's a big circle um and what do you think i'm not gonna say too much let me let me take this out of here so everybody can see it put it in here in the i'm gonna put it in the chat okay let me push it up a little bit Spend their time providing data, full range of activities, work, childcare, household, housework. I'm sorry. I mean, is that just a pie chart? It is kind of like a pie chart. Yeah. <laughs> it's kind of like a pie chart with hours. If you think about it, it's 24 hours, right? That's what I grabbed my attention. 24 hours. And then you can see they spend nine hours and 38 minutes on personal care activities and sports and working and etc. Yeah. It's hard to read, I think, right? I see, what do you think? I see those lines, like random lines. Do, do those mm -hmm. re represent anything? Yeah, like those. 
I don't, it doesn't say. Well, moderate, detailed, secondary, and main. What's that mean? I'm trying to understand what this means either. <laughs> um, let's see. Oh, wow. <laughs> That's a lot to read. Too much. <laughs> Too much to read there. <clears throat> um, ah, okay. I think finally, if something happened, was no maybe not working. Uh, does it change? Oh. It's too much, right? There's a lot of layers into this to read into it. So you're, you're I think once you understand kind of the structure and how to interpret it, it works. But your eyes have to move around the whole page mm -hmm. to kind of even just to figure things out, you know, the labeling, the numbers, you know, how much time is being spent. And again, the tool tips, if you're going to put this much effort into making a, mm -hmm. you know, bespoke visualization, spend a little time on the, the tool tips as well. Um, but, you know, for me, it's not bad once you understand how to read it, it kind of makes sense uh, and it works, but I just think, you know, having labels and numbers all over the place, you're moving your eyes too much. So it seems like there are multiple layers, look at that, in one color only. Very hard to read, I think. Um, but like you said, yeah. I mean, you're gonna have to spend so much time here too. And it's the other thing that got my attention was this chart that's not used that much. This is a step chart. Now that the only difference is they put it down instead of going this way, left to right, is is go, it's going down. <laughs> and I think as opposed to doing like a bar chart mm -hmm. uh, or line charts, I, I think it works here because it is time. Mm -hmm. You know, and it, it's flowing, so it, it's kind of giving an indication of as your day progresses, you know, this is kind of how you're spending it. Mm -hmm. But I don't think uh, for readability, mm -hmm. it works. Um, it, it's still difficult, at least for me, in the way it's layout uh, to kind of interpret. Yeah. What do you think, Aaron? Is this too complicated to read that one? Yes, I, it, it's a bit hard to follow I, I would say at least they made the background black mm -hmm. because if it was white it's uh, you know i see a lot a lot more visuals now given that darker background that, that like mm -hmm. nighttime night uh, dark mode um which i'm a fan of so i i at least appreciate that they did that yeah i don't know i just wanted to show that one we, we're we're over time today but um no, I just wanted to say uh, thank you, everyone, again, for being with us today. Um, uh, next week, um, we have, uh, let me see real quick here. We have, uh, next week, we have food. That should be great. Any Anything related to food, uh, visualizations related to food, uh, that should be a lot of fun. Uh, if anybody wants to participate, let us know. We put it in the chat uh, to sign up, cheat. So if you want to participate with us, you're more than welcome uh so thank you for being here thank you everybody from the chat james joe tito um and um thank you for being here and i uh, hope to see you next week thank you so much thank you for mike michael and aaron thank Thanks, you guys thanks all bye bye, -bye.